In this tutorial, we're going to look at one more example of the standard functional interfaces that come out of the box with Java. I have made a little bit of a cleanup though. I have created a package called unit1, which contains all the unit1 code, and the code that I wrote in the previous tutorial, I've put it in unit2. So the unit1 exercise solution is using the condition, and the unit2 example is using the predicate that I did in the previous tutorial, just for your reference if you were to need the earlier version. Now. Let's look at adding one more standard functional interface to this example. You notice here that this method is printing to the console every time. It does a system.out.println of your uh, person object. Now, what if you wanted to pass in the behavior through a Lambda expression? So that doesn't always print to the console. It does what you pass it, right? So you can pass in a behavior and this performs that behavior based on whatever behavior you're passing in. So this is kind of perform conditionally rather than print conditionally. Now, what does this perform? It needs to perform a behavior that you are passing in. Now you can pass in, let me actually go ahead and change the other methods as well. So that we don't have compilation errors. Now I want to pass in the system.out.print to this Example, so what would the Lambda expression be? We have to look at the steps we would have to do to do this. So now what we've learned is we first figure out what the Lambda expression is, then create an interface and create a method on that interface, right? So let's say, let's take this example. Perform conditionally, you have uh, the people, and then the condition is it always perform it. The third argument should be what you need to perform. Now what is the, our, what is the behavior we need to pass in? We want to pass in, a system that out that print enough whatever object you're passing in. So here it would be for a p, you do system dot out dot print enough p. Now this is the third argument to perform conditionally. So it has to do this. So you have to accept the third argument here and do that instead of just doing system dot out dot print len. Now what is this third argument? It's a lambda expression that takes in something, it takes in an argument, and it doesn't return anything. It's a void, okay? Now, you could, of course, follow the steps, create an interface, which has the, you know, the public void, give it whatever method name, which takes in a person object. That's what we did in the previous unit. But let's see if we have some kind of an out-of-the-box functional interface to help us here. I'm gonna open the Java doc again, and uh, I know this, so I can tell you, you might need a little bit of familiarity of all these interfaces to figure out which one to choose. What I'm gonna choose is this thing called consumer. This is just what we need. It's a functional interface whose functional method is an accept of an object. It takes in a single input argument and returns no results, all right? So this is perfect for what we need. So I'm going to use this now. I'm gonna use a consumer for accepting that argument. So I'm gonna say consumer of person, consumer, and now rather than just print to the console, I'm gonna say consumer dot, me of course import it so that my autocomplete works. This should have an accept method now. It has an accept which takes in a person which is going to be p and the reason it takes in a person is again similar to why this test works because i have a generic interface here now i can pass in this lambda expression over here all right now this should work seamlessly now the method itself does not have logic to print this performs any behavior you pass in because you're passing in the consumer and the only behavior you're passing in all these three calls is to just print that object. So let's execute this and here you see things still work like you would expect it to. And now since you have this behavior passed in, you can change this. Now for, uh, let's say for this one, right? Printing all people with the first name beginning with C. Let's say I just want to print the first name. So I can change the Lambda expression that's passed to it. So let's say I do a P dot get first name. Now for the first two calls, it's gonna do a of p, which is gonna call the to string. But for the third call, it just prints the first name because I'm passing a different behavior. Let's execute this. Now here you see for the previous ones, it prints everything, but for the last two, it just prints 
the first name. So what I'd recommend you do is play around with these things. There are a lot of these interfaces that do come out of the box. There are things which address all combinations of input and output. So we have a by consumer, which is similar to the consumer that we've already seen, but rather than taking just one object, it takes in two objects. So this is handy when you're doing something with two different objects. There is also a by function, which takes in two objects and then returns one object. So here you have a generic of three types. So it takes in two inputs of two types and then it returns something of the third type. So if you have a function which takes in two separate objects and then does something with it, some kind of a processing and then returns a brand new object, well, by function is the way to go. So I'm obviously not going to be covering everything over here, but I do encourage you to check this out. There are a lot of examples of these things available online for you to kind of try out and see what are the different uses for it. But this is another shortcut that uh, Java 8 introduces. You don't have to create your interfaces. If you do have a need for a Lambda expression, you don't find any of these interfaces that address it, well, then you have to create one. But this is quite a list. It addresses a lot of the common scenarios. So you don't really need to create an interface for, for the most part.